Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for the praise team. All right, the power of your gift. I'd like you to turn and say something to your neighbor, but I'd like you to say it with authority and conviction. I want you to say, neighbor, you really do have a gift. All right, all right. You really do have a gift. And, uh, and then I want you to try something else now, because it's sometimes easy, easier to tell someone else that they have something than it is to tell yourself that you have something so now I want you to look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I really do have a gift. <laughs> now, needless to say, I uh, believe that you have a gift. Uh, and I've started out there because I think it's uh, critically important that we recognize this fact that each and every one of us has a gift and uh, a lot of times people ask me well you know I'm so gifted in so many different ways you know which is my gift what do you think is my dominant gift and and in a sense we confuse the multiple applications of our gifting with the gift itself uh, for example you know, people say to me, well, what are you really? You know, you, you preach, yes. Uh, you teach seminars, yes. You sing, yes. You write, yes. Did you do that play? Yes. Do you do, so uh, what is your gift? Actually, these are simply multiple applications of the same gift. I have a gift, and uh, it is a gift of communication. And so I am a communicator, and I am on fire with a message and so I will find multiple ways to communicate the same thing and what ties it all together is that whether you attend one of my plays, if you hear one of my songs, if you listen to me preach or you are with me in a motivational seminar, you will, you will experience the same transfer of or communication of a message that is designed to build you up. And so we each have a gift even though the coat comes with many colors and can be used in, in multiple ways. Each and every one of us uh, has a dominant gifting that God has given to you. How, how do I know for sure that you have a gift? I know for sure because the purpose and the very meaning of life, are you ready? The purpose and the very meaning of life has to do with contribution. Everybody say contribution. Someone asked me one time, they said, you know, what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? And I thought, well, that question is so broad that it's actually misleading because any answer that you give is going to fall short. Right? What is the purpose of life? It's too broad. It's so broad that whatever answer you give is going to fall short. And so I like to hone in when people say, what is the purpose of life? I like to ask them, what do you really mean by that? But I was pondering this whole thing. What is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? And for some reason at that season, I had to go under a car bonnet and look it at the engine of my car. And as I was looking at the engine of my car, I realized that there were many components that made up the engine of my car. I didn't know all the names of all the components. I didn't know the functions of each of the components. I didn't know what role they played, but there were multiple components in the engine of the car, and I reached this conclusion. Every piece in this engine is designed to contribute. And if it's not contributing, it shouldn't be there. And so it was clear to me that whoever designed the engine designed each component to play a part that would contribute to the successful operation of the engine. And then when I looked at humanity, I thought, here we are, pieces in a great big puzzle, components in a great big system, part of something infinitely bigger than us, but significantly a part of it, then it's clear that what we're actually here to do is to contribute in some way. And if you are here to contribute, then God must have given you something to contribute. So when I say that we all have a gift, I know this because we wouldn't be here. We, would not, we wouldn't be around if we didn't have something unique 
to contribute to a bigger picture and you know what I find I find that fulfillment in life listen to me now fulfillment is always in direct proportion to your level of contribution that actually you can be successful by achieving things but you cannot really be fulfilled until you are contributing to something bigger than yourself can I can I hear an amen in here somewhere all right there is a difference between achievements and fulfillments and you'll find that achievements can be quite empty if at the end of it you are not able to contribute to something beyond you something bigger than you something uh, older than you and something that will outlive you if you're not able to add value to others you're gonna feel incomplete as a human being why because you are made to contribute you are made to add value you are made to participate and if you are here for that purpose then there is a gift inside of you everybody say it one more time say I have a gift oh yeah you do you do <laughs> and I think that the greatest single tragedy that could happen to you is that you live and die never discovering your true gifting in life don't worry I haven't even started the engine yet <laughs> you can go quiet all all day long I'm going somewhere today what's this I can think of no greater tragedy than for you to live and die never discovering your true gifting I think that people who are blind to their own gifting are at an extreme disadvantage in life and uh, are going to uh, invite into their world some spirits that you really don't want around you see when you're blind to your own gifting first of all you become jealous of other people who are operating in their element where does jealousy come from where does envy come from and all of the fruit of that all of the backbiting the criticism the gossip the tearing down the pulling down of other people it is the result of someone blind to their own gift feeling as though they have not and looking at others who have as though uh, as though they have something that, that they don't have personally actually if you live your life blind to your gift you know what's going to happen you will become a critic you will become a critic you know what i in fact not only will you become a critic but you will become you will become an advanced critic and the reason is that people who are blind to their own gifting usually have a far too much time on their hands why because they are idle because they don't have much to do and when you are idle not just with your hands but with your mind then actually the devil finds stuff for you to think about and what you start thinking about is other people when you ought to be thinking about projects and you ought to be thinking about your legacy and you ought to be thinking about your contribution instead you're thinking about why does he think he's better than me and why does she think she's better than me and just because they have this and just because that one has that listen that is a sure sign that you are blind to your own gifting and therefore blind to your own potential to become the next big thing in your gift element somebody say amen yeah people who are blind to their gifting they become spiritually redundant they become unemployed and increasingly unemployable because guess what man will employ you outside of your gifting but not God oh no oh no you ain't gonna find your god job your kingdom job till you find your gifting because if god calls you to it he's going to call you based on your gift that's why the bible says the gifts and the callings of god are without repentance why because before you are ever born 